Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, other nouns and adjectives as applicable. <sighs> this video is about magic for beginners. Now, I'm still fully intent on creating and uploading videos that roughly encapsulate what I was teaching with the Indigo School of Magic, but before I get into that, I think it is important to talk to real beginners and give some advice that I think is quite necessary uh, for them to have, advice that I received when I was fairly young. <sighs> so, if you want to learn magic, first thing you have to do is not get too caught up in any particular definition of that word, or in any particular approach to practicing it. And I mean, there can be exceptions. Some people do find the tradition or teacher that's right for them right off the starting line. Um, even then, however, it is good to keep your mind open. One out, Toby. Yes. Go. Go, my kid. Now, when I say open mind, I don't mean believe everything you're told and everything you read and uh, anything like that. I also don't mean that you should expect to find the definitive, singular, correct information. <clears throat> yeah, I know. That can be a tall order for some people not go looking for that. Because, logically speaking, if something is real, oughtn't there be correct information about it and incorrect information? Yes and no. When it comes to awakening, the inner power that is one of the greatest components of what we call magic, that is really central to the whole thing, different approaches, different intellectual frameworks, different emotional and pragmatic experiences are going to trigger an activation for some people and not for others, okay? For some people this approach works, for some people that approach works. For some people neither of these approaches work and the only way that really yields any fruit is to figure it out on your own. And by figure it out on your own, I don't mean just like sit and stare at a wall and wait. I've heard that can do something for you. I've tried it a few times. It can be difficult if vaguely rewarding. What I mean is... Collect information from different sources. Compare and contrast. Put it to the test. Start off by just absorbing it with the assumption it's all true. No matter what your previous experience may tell you. Prior, prior experience can be a great way to not learn what you're looking for. And to not find it. Because if you're not already a magician or wizard or witch, and yet you want to become one, you're looking for something not only that your prior experiences have not given you, but that your prior experiences may have actively prevented you from. Not going to get into the history lesson on that right now. But, suffice it to say that on the path to the discovery of real magic, you will learn certain things that fly in the face of common sense. So, keep an open mind when you're reading something, when you're listening to something. On the other hand, you're also going to find a lot of horse shit. Lots of it. Humans are amazing at the production of horse shit and bullshit and just plain shit. And a lot of it gets disguised as religion, magic, whatever. Some of it's even mixed in with good stuff. Whether on purpose or by people who don't know any better. 
I'm pretty sure I've mixed some horse shit in with my uh, treasured mana and shared it all unknowingly at times. So you do have to be rational, but the appropriate time to be rational is after you have absorbed the full content of whatever it is you're looking at. Okay? Absorb it, see how it sits with you, test it out, then take a step back, compare it to other branches of knowledge and experience that you have. Analyze your feelings about it. Then decide. Alright, and the reason I tell you to absorb with a believer mentality at first is because that is how you figure out if it's real. Because at least certain aspects of magic are dependent upon your consciousness, your intellectual, emotional perspective. And until you get yourself into a certain perspective, a certain perceptual alignment, you don't know. You can't see the evidence of it because you haven't done what needs doing, which is to assume that perceptual alignment. Okay? So, when you find something interesting, learn it, embrace it as true long enough to get the real flavor of it. Then step back and analyze. And maybe dive in for more, maybe turn to something else. Maybe keep what works, throw away the rest. Yeah, this hat's bloody warm. How's my hair? Ah, oh, looks like hell, as usual. I'm okay with that. <sighs> when it comes to teachers, if they're any good, if they're worth learning from, take them seriously. Do learn what they have for you. Do not give up your sovereignty. If what they have for you starts seeming like it's misguided or poisonous, or like it has an ulterior motive, fucking walk away. Doesn't matter if they're the greatest master of the magical arts who's ever walked this earth. If they're pulling you out of alignment with the divine essence at the core of your being, then heck with them, you know? The truest and most magical knowledge and power is not bestowed upon you. It emerges from within you. Any teacher who doesn't know that, or who does know that, and tries to stop you from knowing it, isn't doing a good job at the whole teaching thing. I mean, yeah, there is a place for putting some reality checks, Sometimes with some people. But not everyone is a conceited young guy who gets into all kinds of fucking trouble and needs someone to slap him around a little bit for a second and remind him that the rest of the universe exists and should be treated with a measure of respect. Only some of us needed that. Not many. Alright? So... The only criticisms you should take are the ones that either ring true or that widen your perspective. And even in both of those circumstances, maintain your sovereignty. Do not give the words, teachings, or opinions of another more weight than the weight that you give to your own heart, your own soul, your own rational mind. All right? Now, at this point in the video, I want to take a little moment for a segue to discuss a term that is rather relevant today, and that is cultural appropriation. Now, before y'all run, just chill the fuck out, all right? If you don't like what I have to say, ignore it. I'm just some guy. And before I get into my actual views on this as it relates to magic, I would like to confess my bias. And that is that, generally speaking, I'm something of a left-wing progressive liberal. Not a corporate Democrat. Not a globalist slave. Um, not a social justice warrior in the 
pejorative sense of that term, not entirely ignorant of the valid differences between different cultures and that you're a member of a culture whether you like it or not. But a genuine left-wing progressive. I don't think we need to fight each other. I think we need to get along. I think that war is a waste of time and bloodshed is a crime. I also think that our super corporations need their power checked by somebody in the one avenue that at least in America we supposedly have to try and check that power other than our spending is our government. So that's my bias. When it comes to cultural appropriation, however, I veer in a different direction. That is not to say that I'm going to go putting a feather in my hair claiming to be a Native American, butchering the English language to sound like a cheap stereotype. Not trying to steal other people's living traditions. However, when it comes to magic and when it comes to most things in life, if you want to attain a truly refined perspective, you have to have a wide variety of material to consider. And whatever culture you're from, really, I would say maybe almost universally, maybe not there. I haven't traveled that much, you know don't know everything, but for the most part, whether you are part of a more or less homogenous culture where the same population has been in the same area with the same language for a very long period of time, or whether you are like myself, uh, something of a um, mutt descendant of various colonists and refugees, etc., whose cultural surroundings are still kind of a hodgepodge, uh, very, uh, heterogeneous. Either way, your influences in life have been diverse, and you have available to you an amazing wealth of diverse information and perspectives. Now, there are a few areas where I would recommend you not tread on other people's territory. That's wherever you come from, you know. You know whether it's your territory or not. When it comes to tribal spirits, gods, ancestors of living people who still practice age-old traditions in relation to the spirits of their flesh and blood ancestors, you probably don't want to try to summon their gods, their ancestors, unless you are actually friends with them and are shown the way that they do that. Um, for no other reason, regardless of whether or not the people ever find out or whether they would care or whether you would even care if they care. <sighs> when an ancient shaman dies and is powerful enough to maintain an astral form that could be considered some type of a demigod or even a god, and they choose to stay in contact with their descendants and the descendants of their tribe generation after generation, collecting energy from their offerings and intervening on their behalf in whatever context. If some random person from the other part of from another part of the world with no connection to that tribe whatsoever, worse yet, an adversarial connection, um, finds out, say, somehow your name or some ritual or something that identifies you as a spirit and then summons you to try and get you to do things for them or look for advice or whatever, it might piss you off. And this video is for beginners, so man, the intended audience might not believe that such things exist. Ha 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 Good, don't believe it. Still don't fuck with them uh, for the simple fact that if they do exist and you piss them off, you probably wouldn't know what the hell to do to uh, make good on it or escape or any of that. I wouldn't necessarily know how to help or how to resist that in all cases. So, yeah. Living tribe, particularly 
any that you or your tribe, rather, your cultural identity marker might have had a long-standing blood feud with, even if you yourself are completely over it and ready to just be friends and be peace and be brothers and sisters. Don't try to summon their ancestors or do the rituals of their ancestors unless, like, invited to do so. Other than that, and bear in mind, a lot of cultures have, at least in certain segments, opened up the doors on their old traditions and given the invitation. And sometimes that invitation came from people and sometimes that came from people who were guided by their guardians and guides and ancestors. Okay? Um... But just be careful in that territory. Other than that, though, be diverse. Don't read a book and decide that you are now, you know, a great yogi because you've done some yogic meditation. I mean, you can call yourself that, I guess, but don't expect traditionalists to take you seriously. You might embarrass yourself a little bit or alienate yourself accidentally without knowing and you might still be a real yogi, despite that. All I'm saying is that, regardless of whether or not your personal identity is one which a hundred years ago would have been in a completely homogenous cultural isolation, at this point in time, not only do you not have to be, It might benefit you not to be. If you do have that rich tradition available to you, you might want to go ahead and embrace it, plummet for all it's worth, but don't let that close your mind to the rest of the world and the rest of humanity. And for those who are maybe a little more similar to myself, who might be a little disconnected from any unique cultural roots or a hodgepodge of enough different ones that it's like, you know, I'm neither German nor Slavic nor British nor Irish. And the fact that my bloodlines go in those directions doesn't necessarily make me truly a member of those tribes. Nor a bona fide inheritor of those languages or religions or any of it. Luckily for all of us, Truth is truth outside of the limitations of your tribal membership, of your cultural indoctrinations, of your cultural flowering and choices and how you express yourself and how your self-expression contributes to your culture. Outside of all of that shit, all of that very human stuff, there is truth. A truth that is nearly impossible to convey in words and symbols and images, although we try and try and try. And sometimes the way to find that truth is to sift through a lot of those words and a lot of those images. Try some of those practices, really. Don't get sucked in too hard by Groups who, perhaps due to their own feeling of loss and disconnection from a recognizable, unique heritage, are trying to formulate one with particular emphasis on combating that which is other. Okay? If people who grow up embedded in ancient cultures can look outside and say, wow, that is an interesting world I want to connect with, then those who aren't really embedded in an ancient culture might, you know, while seeking to plumb the depths of something to connect to, to grow some roots with, also, be like, hey, all of you who are other, you're not that different. We're more the same than different in most regards. 
So don't get all aggro, don't get all paranoid, don't feel like the wisdom that comes from people who might speak a different language or have different pigmentation or hair or whatever. Don't feel like that stuff is off limits to you. If people are telling you, oh, why are you studying this, that, or the other thing? That's not your thing, you know? Don't you know where you come from? That's their own fear. That's their own... Their fears, their losses, their ignorance, in some cases. Their frighteningly dark misuse of wisdom in some cases. Basically, it's their fucking burden to bear, not yours. And what choice you make in that regard affects more than just you. It does affect you. But it affects more than just you. And I think most of us have this sense that there are a lot of different ways that civilization could crumble, that our species could face extinction. There are a lot of ways that we can go that are like not good ways to go. And while I'm speaking from my own perspective here, being a white American male. While it does pay to be aware of what you're not and not go trying to Be the expert in things that you are not really that connected to. Pays to listen more than speak. If a door is closed, it pays to, you know, maybe knock a second time if you're really into it, but just move along. Um, ultimately, if humanity is going to have a chance, we have to be trying to understand each other more, not trying to wall off and just get to what's mine, 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 mine. I want magic that nobody else has. I want the special tradition that's only of my people. Like, maybe like 90% of the population ago, back in the old, 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 old days, when there was enough land that you... And little enough transportation tech that you just really didn't have any other options than to settle with whatever you got. It's a different world. Wisdom calls on us to be more in harmony and less in conflict. Doesn't mean you have to be defenseless or gullible or just let yourself be abused out of some really misplaced sense of guilt resulting from a, what could be a more or less accurate sense of hmm, I got some unfair benefits in that lottery <laughs> don't let that turn into you know, degrading yourself and don't let that intimidate you into thinking that you don't have a right to explore that which has been freely shared by many peoples. All right? It's possible to be both aware of and somewhat sensitive to cultural issues, racial issues, interreligious issues, sensitive to how other people might perceive you, whether you intend it that way or not. There has to be a balance between that and not apologizing for being who you are, whoever that may be. You are not a mistake. You are not a crime. Your existence is real and divine, whoever you are. 
So don't misuse it, but don't throw it away either. Appreciate the fact that you have before you endless opportunities for connection. And any doors that are shut in your face or any people who feel like you shouldn't be exploring, fuck them. Move on. So yeah, that's all I really have to say on cultural appropriation. If it really is like the distinct secret tradition of a living people, yeah, you probably don't want to fuck with that too much. That's just, that's not even a moral statement. That's just like practical wisdom. You go summon up the tribal gods of people who don't want anything to do with you and don't want to be summoned by you. Good fucking luck. Escaping, surviving, you know, all of that. Otherwise, let's just be friends, you know, be friendly. If anyone rejects your friendship, move on. If anyone invades your friendship in your personal space, doesn't have to be about anything other than how you do or don't want to connect with any individual human being. I guess I have to call it out a little bit because there are probably some young people out there that are going to see this video eventually. Um, particularly with regard to the Germanic stuff and Slavic paganism, Germanic paganism, you're going to find a lot of very racist folk out there. Not all. Not all by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know. And it's not that those people don't have some values or even real magic of some kind, to some extent. I'm not trying to pick a fight with the... the less open varieties of pagans. I'm not trying to pick any fights. I'm just saying you probably don't want to get sucked into that shit. If they want to be their own little indigenous thing and just hide from the rest of the world, fine. Find somewhere to hide. But if you're going to be out there interacting with the rest of the world, try not to be an asshole about it. <laughs> and if people who are different from you are interested in your traditions, Try welcoming them into your traditions. A lot of the best, wisest traditions out there are happy to accept people from anywhere and everywhere, so long as they're sincere, all right? So don't get caught up in this, like, weird racist magic shit. It's, it's a fucking toilet bowl. Don't, swir don't go down that swirly, you know? It's not worth it. Find the real ancient traditions of those people if that's what you're interested in. I personally have been studying the runes for coming on 20 years. They're powerful. But yeah, you don't have to join the fucking clan to learn how runes work. And you don't have to be white, alright? Just, I hate talking about this stuff because I feel like I'm in a demographic that probably doesn't necessarily have a lot of people wanting to hear what some fucking white guy has to say about it. Um... But yeah, for you younger folk who might not have really a lot of life experience yet, just be aware of the fact that that sand trap is there to be found if you try to find it. And maybe even if you're just trying to find out some interesting historical information, you might wander into it anyway, so be aware. And beware. <laughs> All right, so now that I've dealt with that dicey topic, let's get back to some more pragmatic, what you do do kind of advice. Um, read a lot, watch videos, and experiment, all right? Oh, crap. One more area of don't fuck with it. Personal uh, opinion here, but well-founded, if I do say so myself. Um, avoid any form of blood sacrifice. Okay? Animal blood, or your own blood. Alright, I know there have been some movies out there and there are people who do use blood in their practices. 
Um, there are a lot of dangers associated with that. And even if you feel like it's more ethical to just use your own blood because it's yours to do with as you please, understand that when you put your blood into a form of magic, you are binding yourself into that magic. And... You could still face consequences of that years after you've forgotten that it even happened. Alright? So just... As far as the killing of things for energetic value, no, no. Just because the ancients felt it appropriate in many contexts, we're not ancient people. We don't live in the world they lived in. And if you're from a tradition or a people that disagrees with me, feel free to disagree. If you don't know what magic is, or you're trying to figure it out, stay away from that stuff. You will hurt yourself. Just saying. And, uh... Dark magicians and sorcerers who might want to share their hardcore practices with you can be dangerous. It's like, welcome to the dark side. There are no cookies. Are you surprised we lied to you? I mean, come on, it's the dark side. <sighs> yes, we all have darkness within us. Death is an aspect of life. Pain is the balance of pleasure, all right? But you have to choose your alignment. And if you prefer pleasure over pain, if you prefer justified confidence over guilt or bringing ruin upon others, then recognize that about yourself. Embrace that as strength. And understand that in terms of magic, simple truth. The only power that is even worth calling power in a real sense does not present itself to the violent, the mean, the angry. Don't use it to try and control people, to attack people, to take your revenge on them. Yeah, there's the primitive desire to, you know, win and have victory. The true victory is the victory that doesn't require the defeat of others. True victory is when your enemy is elevated and has victory with you and is no longer your enemy. And true power is accessed in part by finding the part of you that wants that. That wants for your enemy to prosper and be as your friend and be your friend. Or at least stop having anything to beef over. And if you can truly embrace peace in your heart, truly embrace love, and truly embrace nonviolence, then there are paths and powers which can become open to you which will otherwise you would never be able to find. Anyway, Final sets of advice here, and this is on a more practical, like, actually do something with this advice. It's not, you know, not the don't do this, it's the do this. Okay? I'm going to give you a list of books. Now, these books are chosen not because I think that I completely agree with every, anything written. 
Not because I agree with everything written in any one of them, not because I think they are necessarily the best books out there, or even that they're necessarily the best for you. But I'll give you my recommended reading list based on the fact that as a, a teenager and young adult, I'd say between the ages maybe 15 and 20, I read somewhere between two and 300 books on various aspects of magic and occultism. And there were just a few that were highly impactful for me. So much so that I still remember them 15 years after I hauled the lot to half price books to give away. Fool. If I had never done that, I'd probably have about, I don't know, maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred more books than I have, including novels and all the other crap. And there's a whole other sec second set of my spiritual collection that went away too. But, you know, whatever. They're just things. Anyway, some of the ones that I remember that were impactful on my life and a couple that maybe I wish I had known. First, uh, get ready to throw your popcorn at the screen. Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Among many occultists and among many traditionalist Wiccans, this book is treated as fluffy garbage nonsense. Um, And I can tell you why, it's at least partially why. One, the traditionalist Wiccans are very possessive of that word, at least some of them are. The ones that aren't so possessive of it don't tend to make a scene. Um, but at least some tend to be kind of dickheaded about it. And that book was something that got a lot of people calling themselves Wiccan, even when they had no direct connection to any of the traditional traditions, the recognized ones among whoever, you know? Sorry, guys, the word doesn't belong to you. From the founding of the founding of your tradition onward, it's kind of been spread about and encouraged to share. So, yes, a lot of people around the world took that offer. And a lot of initiates within your traditions took what they found to be most valuable and then stepped away to form new traditions, and some part of that was to say that just as the old ones, the older people, innovated in their own ways, so too can you. And yes, the word Wicca stuck around in at least a lot of those instances. I'm sorry if that upsets anybody. Actually, no, I'm not. Grow up. Um, not saying I don't appreciate the uniqueness of what you have. Just the word spread, and so did certain aspects of the knowledge, and hybridized with other things and yet remained with a certain essence that some people value. So, why am I recommending a book on Wicca, which technically is a religion, not strictly a form of magic, although it does embrace magic and have a lot? It's because a lot of what this guy has to say is useful to hear, even if you don't end up agreeing with all of it, even if the fact that it was written at a like a literary level to appeal to maybe 16-year-olds, and even opens with like an address to, you know, if you're a parent who found this kid, this in your kid's room, don't freak out, all right? Might seem kind of patronizing as a, a mature adult to p be like, why did this guy recommend that I read this tribe? Read it. and understand it, and then move on, you know? It'll, in my opinion, help set you on a positive path without closing the doors to real knowledge and real power, all right? Um, yeah, there was, you know, a couple generations, which I might have been part of at one time, of young kids who read this, thought they knew everything, and just were blithely unaware of the fact that they were complete novices and aggressively defended their right to consider themselves to be experts despite being anything but. And that annoyed a lot of people. And so a lot of people talk shit about this book. And yet it did much more than that. And it has value, in my opinion. Alright? Another book. 
uh, Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig. Um, this is kind of, uh, some people might consider it heavy going. I know for me I had to read it three, I read it twice, cover to cover, kind of half-ass cherry-picked some of it, and then the third time was when I actually worked through it. Um, I was pretty young. Uh, I, it's written in ex an accessible way. Uh, it is not strictly the Golden Dawn tradition, but is largely based on the Golden Dawn tradition, and serves as a good introduction to some of the older forms of European magic. All right. Uh, if nothing else, it makes it a lot easier to understand what people are talking about in some of the heavier literature. And it kind of takes this, like, lessons, practical exercises, like it's designed for, you know, a course. Um, not a bad one. A little heavy on the uh, Kabbalistic Judeo-Christian influences, because those were largely impactful in Western magic, European magic, for a long time. So their names of God and, uh, you know, biblical references. And references to paganism as well. Uh, it's a kind of uh, a unique synthesis. Both the Golden Dawn's traditional form and Don Craig's presentation of the Golden Dawn with some other stuff in a very sensible way that yields results if you choose to discipline yourself to it and even if you don't choose to discipline yourself to the practices in it. Certainly not bad knowledge to have. Okay? Um... Let's see, some other ones. In the magic realm, if you do want to get into a more uh, comprehensive study of the Golden Dawn, uh, the Portable Complete Golden Dawn System of Magic is Israel Regardi's book. Um, originally, I'd gotten the Golden Dawn, which was an earlier uh, version from Llewellyn, and that was what I did most of my studying out of for like well over a decade. And then I picked this thing up, and I'm like, whoa. It got, like, re-edited and put in a user-friendly format. Awesome. So I'd go for the user-friendly format. It's relatively cheap as far as occult books go. Um, there is, like, a premium edition that's out of print and can run you hundreds of dollars. Um, I looked at a PDF of it online. It looks to be substantially the same, maybe with a few typos that are in that one that aren't in the more expensive one, but whatever. If you really want to dig into the Golden Dawn tradition, that's uh, kind of a fundamental source book. Um, you can always join one of the orders out there. Um, I will say that if you're just searching Golden Dawn, you're not going to find most of them because somebody ran around suing people um, and saying that it belonged to him. And despite the fact that I don't think the average U.S. court judge, or European court judge for that matter, knows jack shit about it, Lawsuits are expensive, and a lot of great groups didn't want to fucking deal with it. So, if you want to find traditional initiation, I don't really know where to point you. It's not really my, uh, not my group, not my people. Although I have studied it a lot, and I find it worth the time to study and practice. So, yeah. Uh, the Complete Golden Dawn System of Magic by Israel Regardi. And then last one on the more or less Western traditions, like the more or less traditional magic as such. Um, and this is kind of a random one. There might be others. might be hard to find. I don't know. It's been a long time. But uh, The Magician's Workbook by Donald Tyson. Uh, it's just exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise without much in the way of theory. Um, intended to be a workbook, and some of the exercises in there are, you know, maybe not that unique, but they're collected from a lot of different sources, and they will help to develop certain qualities that will be useful regardless of what flavor of practice you eventually use to articulate your inner power, and to communicate with the broader powers that are not yours, but that you can develop friendly relations with.
So a couple others that I found influential. Um, there was the Kabbalion by Three Initiates, uh, which was a pseudonym for a guy named William Walker Atkinson. Uh, theosophist, to the best of my knowledge, but I could be a little off on that. Um, and it's not bad. I was much more impressed and much more impacted by work that he wrote under a different pseudonym. Uh, as Yogi Ramacharaka, back in, I think, 1902 or 1903, uh, he wrote a whole series of books, but the, the opener, which really blew my mind at the time, I mean, on second reading it blew my mind. First reading I was like, okay, yeah, this all makes sense. It opened so many doors of understanding. It wasn't until the second time that it was like, oh my god, this is dragging me out of this dimension. What the hell is this book? Um, Fourteen Lessons on Yogi Philosophy and Oriental Occultism. Um, yeah, a little dated as far as the title goes, but the presentation of yoga is... I would think relatively um, accurate in terms of tradition, probably influenced by theosophy. I am not a uh, scholar of Sanskrit. I have a few mantras and I've read some and I've gone to some meditation groups, but I'm not a uh, expert by any stretch of the imagination. Not even close. I worship Lord Shiva from time to time because he got my attention and said, Hey boy, I'll purify you. Go, have fun. But yeah, um... It's good stuff. Honestly, I feel like the Kabbalion was kind of like, uh... I don't know if it was written earlier or later, but it's... a weaker... book. Not that it's not useful, but it's weaker. The yogi philosophy is ancient and powerful and true and presented in such a way that you don't have to uh, learn Sanskrit or move to India or do physical exercise, which is handy. And does give good information about the different branches of yoga and a lot of the, uh, at least one branch of philosophy to contextualize it all, and it is very, very harmonious with my understanding of magic and occultism after many more years and many different learning experiences have passed. I go back to that one and say, ah, yeah, that was something. Another thing might be worth looking into is uh, kind of the New Age version of quantum physics. Now. A lot of people hate that stuff. They do. First accusation is it's not accurate science. Some of it is accurately presented. But people with doctorate degrees in hard sciences don't usually want to sully their reputation by mixing their scientific knowledge with spiritual beliefs, regardless of whether or not they think the two are perfectly great fits for each other. They don't want to risk their reputation on it, you know? At least in this country, it can cost a quarter million dollars to get a doctorate degree. You, you don't want to spoil that. Um, so you have people who are not primary, who are not scientists, presenting scientific knowledge to the best of their understanding, and correlating it to a lot of other stuff. They're not science books. However, my first exposure to New Age quantum physics was through a book called *The Holographic Universe* by Michael Talbot. Um, The day I read the last page of that book, I had an experience of dissolving into light and expanding and understanding the math of not the whole universe, but like a several hundred mile radius around where I was. So much that there was no way to contain it in my brain. And I didn't wake up like from a dream. I coalesced back and my body and the airplane I was riding in all just kind of concretized back around me eyes open. I was just like, what the fuck just happened to me? I thought I was enlightened. It was but an experience. My human self certainly was quick to reassert its dominance of my experience. 
only a few hours later. But it was a life-changing experience. Came from that book. And in the 17 years that have passed, not 15 years, how old was I? I was 18. So it's been 17 years. I have studied, not at college, but I have studied some more respectable treatises on quantum physics. One written by a Princeton guy. Um, found a video that's actually very interesting from uh, the Royal Institute talking about like basically where physicists are at with their fundamental understanding of what the universe is made of. Apparently it boils down to a number of fields that you can count on your fingers to fill the whole universe and those fields fluctuate and generate everything that's ever been observed, at least that any scientist would consider relevant. Apparently. Um, if I remember to, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one. If you want to understand how real, solid stuff that two people look at it and they see the same thing, more or less, at least similar enough that when they talk about it, they're pretty sure they're seeing the same thing. And it's behaving the same way in these predictable fashions. If you want to understand how that aspect of the universe relates to the aspect of you that can violate the law of gravity or overrule the law of gravity, can change causality in real ways, the closest to a really rational explanation you're probably ever going to find is through some of the more mi Oh, I don't know how much of that got cut off. Alright, I don't know where that left off, but uh, yeah. Holographic Universe, Science in the Akashic Field. Compare that to 14 Lessons in Yogi Philosophy. Uh, and compare it to Scott Cunningham's stuff, compare it to uh, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. It is an ancient classic. My favorite translation is by C.W. Ledbetter, who was uh, a theosophist, British old guy way back in the day. Um, knew enough Sanskrit to do the translation, and presented it in a way that, at least for my nerdy self, was very accessible. Um, And yeah, if you are an English speaker who wants to know what Patanjali had to tell you, the Ledbetter translation is a very accessible one. It's my favorite. Um, yeah. Other than that, read what you want. Wikipedia can be your friend, alright? Yeah, Wikipedia also, the articles can be subject to a certain amount of academic skepticism. Uh, being skeptical is not only something that benefits academics and academia in general and the human race in general, it's also a social cause that can get out of control and can lead to misrepresentations. So just because someone smart with some citations says that blah 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 If they're talking about magic, take that with a grain of salt or like a heap of salt, you know? Sometimes people don't know what they're talking about even when they think they do. Read a lot. And practice, you know? Part of the reason I like the Wicca from the Solitary Practitioner book is that he breaks down an approach to ritual magic that is very minimalist as far as the required elements, but does put in like what his required elements are for a f way of constructing rituals that are effective, and how to command energy, which is critical, and uh, how to customize it to your own tastes, which is quite different from most approaches to ceremonial magic. And while there is a real value in practicing expertly created ritual the way it was intended when it was created. When it comes to knowing some of what the people who create and have created rituals knew, some of the fundamental perspective that allows you 
to start to begin to figure out how to create something as powerful as that which was created by the masters of the past. You know, Cunningham actually does a decent job of giving you a real introduction to that that urges you to practice and does so in a way that's not going to lead you into darkness or error. Might not give you a whole lot of meat to work with, but it gives you enough to get started. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, for a beginner's video, like where to start and how to avoid pitfalls, I probably have come off as a opinionated dickhead at least a few times over the course of this little uh, discussion. So be it. I am kind of an opinionated dickhead. I have to admit it. It's just part of who I am. I hope that those of you who see the value in it and needed that value got what you sought. And uh, if anyone got offended, I don't know if I'm sorry or not. I guess it depends on why you're offended, but probably not, to be honest. Anyway. <laughs> I say it with all love in my heart. It truly is. Um, it's not out of any contempt or dislike of people who might be offended by the shit that comes out of my mouth. It's just that I don't have to be controlled by any feelings but my own. So if I have offended, I get, you know, tell me about it in the comments so I can at least, like, be aware of it if it's something I wasn't already aware of. Um, but bring the love in your heart, you know? And remember, you have every bit as much of a dark side as I do, maybe a lot more. So if all I have to do is bitch at some people who bitched at me in the past and talk about it and say that rabid racism is kind of... Yuck. Like, hopefully that doesn't offend any of you. So, yeah, yeah. I'll get on with the uh, planned curricula, blah, 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 for everyone. Um, to as much of an extent as I end up doing it on video for YouTube. Uh, when I get to it, it is in the, uh, it's in the works, and I'm still working on some books that are not quite yet ready to publish. And whether you are a brand new beginner seeking knowledge and trying to figure out if this is something you can even learn or whether you're uh, some of my wise friends and strangers of similar vibration I bless you and wish you well on your path Blessed be.